G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. Today, we're going to take a closer look at sorters. We've used these before on our mining ship when we made a few upgrades to it. We used sorters so that we would eject only the stone that we were mining and keep all the good ore that we wanted. For this tutorial, we're going to use a tip that was pointed out to me quite recently on one of my previous videos. And that is using an antenna to allow us to view what names we've given to objects on our base. The way this works is that if I'm within range of this antenna and I have a block set up like this with show on HUD on, its name will be highlighted over it as long as I remain in that antenna range. This is helpful as it allows us to, in the vanilla game, without using the build vision mod, see what we've named things. And for this particular tutorial, we kind of need to know what we're heading towards. What we're trying to set up here is a system where we can connect a mining ship up with whatever ore it's got. That ore will then go to this container. The ore that can go to the refinery will head to it. The ice will then get stored separately and be accessible by the oxygen generator. From the refinery, the ore, the refined ingots will get transferred into this storage container, which will then be accessible by the assembler and it will output components, which will go back into the main storage. Where the refinery has refined uranium, this reactor will have access to the ingot storage so that it can get that uranium directly into it. With our oxygen and hydrogen setup, we're going to want to be able to get oxygen tanks and hydrogen tanks into here, but we don't want the system dragging them all out of whatever inventories we put them in. We want to be able to choose when they go there because we actually want to keep our full tanks in our ships or in our suits inventory when they're connected. So it's going to need to be connected back up to this main system so that when we dock ships to a general connector, we have access to that oxygen and hydrogen inventory. So let's get started. The first stage we want to do is to connect up our ore container to our mining connector. We also want to connect up the ice storage to this connector. And for this example, we're going to do that through the ore storage. We don't need to do that, but that's how we're going to approach it. What we'll do is start with our curved conveyors. Connect up a few here. And then we'll put down a sorter block. This conveyor sorter needs to be pointed in the direction that you want things to flow. And then for ore, we want it to be set on a whitelist. You can either have this set to blacklist where it will disallow anything you put as an active filter or whitelist where it will only allow the things that you've set as an active filter. In this case, we want all types of ore to get put into that container. So we've set it on whitelist, we've set it on ore, and we want this sorter to pull everything out of the ship that gets connected to the mining connector. So that means we turn drain all on and that one's ready to go. Next up, we want to con connect this ore storage over to our ice storage. We don't want it to pull anything but ice out of this container. So as we connect these two up, we will place a sorter in the middle heading in the direction of the ice container. And just like the ore sorter, we will turn this to drain all on. We'll turn it to a whitelist and we'll select ice out of the list and make sure it's in our active filter. That way, every type of ore will move into this storage container, which I believe includes ice, but we will have to test. In fact, let's do that right now before we get too far ahead of ourselves. So if we go to Shift F10, which in creative mode allows us to spawn items, we can then select ice, select about a thousand, place that and grab it. 
and then we can drop it in this connector. If everything's working, this ice should end up in the oxygen generator as it travels through this. Well, it'll actually end up in the ice con container because we don't have the generator connected yet. So we put it in there. And it's moved. Where has it moved to? Storage ice. There we go. And it's not moving from there. Perfect. So the system is working so far. Let's build our oxygen system first. The oxygen generator should be able to pull whatever it wants from this container. For some reason, I'm unable to actually place this easily on the top, but there we go, it's working. So the oxygen generator can just pull that ice directly out of the storage container. That's fine. It can also, without any limitations, place oxygen into the oxygen tank and hydrogen into the hydrogen tank. What we do want though, is a connection back up to our main connector so that we've got access to these tanks to fill up our personal tanks, the little ones that you can carry around. We want this to be a system that's not going to break the rest of the loop. So it won't allow backwards connections that shouldn't be there. And the way we can do that by adding a sorter here that leads out and a sorter here that leads back in. We'll connect this up and then I'll show you what settings I would use for these sorters to allow the types of connections that we want and disallow all others. We can bring this across. And let's pop down because we don't want to actually connect with those other connection, those other conveyors that are over there. Place that that way. Come straight underneath. Little curve, and because we're probably going to connect to this later, we want that. So now that we've got that set up, we can go back and we can have a look at how we'll set up these sorters. So the only thing we want coming out of this particular sorter are oxygen tanks and hydrogen tanks. So the little bottles, so there's hydrogen bottle and oxygen bottle. That's all we want. We don't want it forcibly taking these out. We want it to be something that we can move in manually when we need these things to be refilled. So that will work for that one. Let's name this as well. This will be sort. Oh, caps locks on. This will be sorter. O2 out. And then if we move across to this sorter, we can name it sorter O2 in. And with that one, we again want whitelist and just the bottles. And again, not on drain all. We want to leave that off because we want this to be manual. This setup will allow only bottles to travel between the tanks and the oxygen generator to the main, the main storage system. It will allow nothing else to move, but it will allow those bottles to move back and forth freely as we've got sorters running in both directions. So that's our hydrogen and oxygen setup. The next thing we want to look at is our refinery, assembler and reactor setup. In this particular design, we're going to basically be daisy chaining these together. So it'll be one thing going on to the next thing, going on to the next thing. And what we want is this ore container to be connected directly up to our refinery. Refineries, reactors, oxygen generators, all of those production blocks, they have the ability to pull stuff on their own without needing a sorter block to do the pulling for them. Whereas storage containers, they need these to do the movement of goods through the conveyor system. So we don't need to place anything here. 
This refinery will pull only when it's got space in its inventory and the rest of the time the ore will remain in this storage container. What we want next though, is for this storage container to accumulate all of the ingots that this refinery creates. So we connect it up, but this time we will need a sorting block. So we'll put these bends in. Normally I would try and place these blocks a lot more tightly to one another, but I felt it was easier to describe this with a bit of space to move. So I've left them with quite a lot of space and that makes the conveyors a bit snaky. So this sorter will be for ingots because it's going to take all of the ingots out of the refinery and put them into the storage that's accessible by the assembler. So we want ingots on the whitelist and we want this one to drain all of the ingots from the refinery. So we move that across into there. Now, any ore that goes into our connector will get moved into our storage ore. When the refinery has space in its inventory, it will pull from that ore storage and it will start refining into ingots. And then this ingot storage will pull all the ingots out of the refinery and store them there, ready for our assembler and our reactor. The reactor needs the refined uranium ingots and the assembler will need the rest. As we were talking about, these are both what I would classify as production inventories and they can pull materials for themselves. So we just need a direct connection to the, uh, to the reactor. That's also useful to have as you will want backflow into this storage and then into the assembler if you're creating missiles. Because missiles need uranium, you may need to pull some from that reactor at a later stage. So it can be handy to have that be able to flow in both directions. Sometimes you'll cancel a construction in the assembler and that will mean its inventory may become full and you'll want to be able to move those ingots back into the storage container. So we want that bit to be double uh, two direction flow as well. The next thing we want is for this assembler to be able to connect up to the main storage so that all of its components will get moved out. Since this is going into storage, we're going to need to put a sorter in place so that it will pull all of the completed components, all of the completed tools, and all of the completed ammunition from the assembler and put it into storage. So we want it direction heading towards the storage and we want to whitelist those things I just went through. Drain all on, whitelist, we want ammo, we want components and we want hand tools. We want all of them because those are the things that you're going to build from your assembler. This system won't work if you need to use your assembler as a as a disassembler, so if you're breaking down items. That's pretty rare use case, so I think it's good enough for the time being. If you were going to use the assembler to disassemble, you'd need to turn this from drain all on to drain all off, manually place them into the assembler or into this storage container and then set them to disassemble. Otherwise, if you leave this sorter on and place them in that inventory, it will pull them straight through the assembler and pop them back in your main storage again for you. This setup is more used for when you want to have a supply chain from mining ship to refinery to assembler to component storage. The final connection we need to set up is our component storage to our connector for our ships. 
if you've got a large base, you'll want to connect this portion of the system up to containers or connectors around the base so that you've got access to that inventory without having to walk back to your main storage. The rest of these conveyors can be kept as a closed system separate to that. So we've seen our system, let's test to see if it works. So we want to have a little bit of ore in there, a little bit of ice, a little bit of a couple of other things so that we see what happens when we connect this to our connection system and what happens with our production that goes on after that. So let's spawn in some ice. Let's spawn in some cobalt ore. Uh, some construction components. And Put a bit of iron ore. And let's get ourselves a hydrogen bottle. We want to put all of these in our storage system of this ship. Put a tool in there as well. So we've got some components couple of different types of ore, an oxygen bottle and an automatic rifle. When we connect this ship up to our connector over here, what should happen is the ore will end up in the refinery, the ice will end up in the oxygen generator, and everything else will remain in the ship. So let's check this out. Press P to park. We have a look. And our ship storage, we've kept our components, we've kept our hydrogen bottle, and we've kept our automatic rifle. We have a look at our refinery, and it's got the cobalt and the iron. We have a look at our oxygen generator, and it's got the 2,000 dice from the bit we placed before and the bit we just placed now. If we leave that connector, Move our way over to here. We're going to need another connector so we can land on it. What we want to test is if the hydrogen bottle can get to and from our oxygen generator. It can clearly get there as it's been sucked across because it was empty. And can we bring it back? Yes. Does it get automatically pulled back there because of our pull setup? No. And we can also manually move it each way. Can we move our rifle? Nope. Can we move our components? Nope. What we can do is move our components into the main storage. As you can see, we can move anything in that direction and back because that's a standard conveyor connection. What about our refinery? Let's make it make a little bit of iron ore. And you can see that everything is being pulled straight out of it into our ingot storage. Storage ingots now has some cobalt and some iron. And the conveyor sorter pulls it and then drops it in. Pulls it, drops it in, pulls it, drops it in. So our assembler should be able to make a few steel plates. And there we go, making those plates, which should now be moved into main storage. And you can see, we've got those 10 plates that I just created. If we go back to our assembler, we won't be able to move these plates back into it because of that sorter setup that we've got. So everything's working. It's a reasonably automated system. With scripting, you can make it more automated and remove the need for sorters, but I kind of like using this way because I'm hopeless at programming or scripting. And this sort of visual setup works nicely for me. So I thought I'd show that one too. There's another way you can go about setting these up. And I'm not going to go through the full build. I'm going to show you it here. This is more of a wheel and spoke sort of design. You have your central main storage. Connected up to your mining connector. You have 
your general connector so that you have access to that inventory. And then everything branches off that main inventory conveyor system. You have your refinery, which has a sorter, which is pulling all ore. And then a separate sorter connected to the same setup, which is pulling all ingots out of the refinery and into the general storage. Those ingots then get pulled from general into the assembler with this storage, with, sorry, with this sorter, which has got all ingots on its whitelist. And then all components, hand tools and ammo get pulled out and put back into main storage. Like we had with the other setup, we've got a sorter, this central one. It pulls all ice into that storage container. It also allows free movement of bottles into and out of that, ox that uh, ice storage container. So just as we had before, we can move ice from the tanks and the generator back into main storage, but only the ice gets pulled into that storage container. An advantage of this sort of setup is that it's a bit more modular. You can increase the size of your general storage. You can, if you want to, stop store storing ice in that container and it will still be stored here because this conveyor sorter is still pulling into this. And if you compare the two, even with this amount of space, the one on the left, it looks a little bit neater. And you can use this as you have rooms and then just have a single conveyor system running throughout the rest of the base. Whereas this one, you'd have to have the connections all lined up between each room, then circling back to the start after the assembler part of the construction process. One problem I did notice while we were looking at the wheel and spoke design is we shouldn't have the refinery portion pulling all types of ore. Ice is considered a type of ore, so that system will pull the ice, potentially before the oxygen generator, and will gradually accumulate ice in the ore storage. If we want to have the system set up this way, we actually need to individually select each type of ore we want to send to the refineries. And if we had arc furnaces, we could separate those types out so they only go to the arc furnaces and have a separate storage set up for them. Otherwise, this system I think works really well. Let me know in the comments if you've got any tips or tricks for your own sorter designs. I will look at some mod ways of managing this and some script ways of managing this in the future, but I wanted to go through sorters first as that's the system that's already built into the vanilla game and it's one that's available and actually relatively easy to use. It's quite flexible and I quite like having the manual setups as it creates this enormous network of conveyors that makes any industrial base look even more industrialized. Makes it look like a big brewery or some other oil refinery or some setup like that where you've got pipes going every which way and unless you actually know what's going on it's really hard to follow what's happening, which I think is kind of cool. As always, there's plenty more to come, so I'll see you then. a different one that's not powered down.